Jake's point of view. I breathe in, and I breathe out. Low drums pound in the back of my head. Marching drums, bidding me on, onwards to the end. Do your best to make sure everyone looks out for each other. There's a big test coming up, and if you want to escape, you have to pass. Do what you have to. That's what the girl told me during my phone call. The mysterious girl from the vent. That's what she said. I look up from my computer and consider the faces in the room. I look first to Blue, typing away. She's taking far longer than she normally does. I can't read her screen from here, but there's a great deal more text across it than usual. I look from red to orange to green, then to indigo and to violet, and at last to the pale face of yellow. Did I do enough? I can't help thinking. Was my little display of irrationality enough to help them, to save them? Were they motivated by it? Did it get them thinking, at least? Or were my words dismissed as the ramblings of an idiot? I'm convinced that I'm right. I'm sure of it. Examples start coming to me. Soldiers, for instance. Soldiers are irrational, right? A rational actor would choose to run away, to escape the battle and preserve their life. That would make sense, that would be the logical choice after all, but if every soldier acted in such a supposedly rational way, then the battle would be lost. Time will tell, I suppose. Time will tell. The clock ticks down, ever closer to zero. Here we go then. I think to myself, this is it. I finish typing up my account, and a few seconds later the screen goes dark. Someone's going to read it, I think. Someone, somewhere, is going to read it. Maybe it'll even save their life one day. The violet door opens wide, whirring and grinding, and revealing, as expected, a shadowy room beyond. I rise from my chair and look around at the others, at these people, these lost souls. They're wearied and haggard and soaked to the bone, exhausted, but not quite beaten. Not just yet. Final room. Red says in a low voice. Hopefully. Violet mutters. She brushes the purple dyed part of her hair behind her ear. Yes, hopefully. Red agrees. You ready, Blue? I ask her. She looks scared. For the first time so far in these games, she's truly in the same boat as the rest of us, heading out into the unknown. Yeah. She replies weakly, Here we go then. And together we head onwards, towards our ultimate fates. Ahead of us is a third and perhaps final statue of the Asura. The room's light comes from his eyes, two shining violet stones in the darkness. He holds in his hand a large set of scales, and his feet are planted firmly across a white stone pedestal. Upon this pedestal are the following words, which Blue reads aloud. This is a sign of beauty. Do not unto others what you would not have them do unto you. Do unto others. Green murmurs in echo. Blue continues. Deliver to others what you wish to be delivered unto yourself. This will become truth. It's the golden rule. Orange murmurs. Red looks at her. Treating others as one would hope to be treated themselves. Warren says, Common to essentially every major religion on earth. This is the sum of duty. Do not unto others what you would not have them do unto you. Deliver to others what you wish to be delivered unto yourself. This will become truth. What a nice collection of words. While it says, if only they actually apply to the real world. Is there really nothing you can take from them, Violet? Orange asks her. The girl snorts. Don't make me laugh. Would you appreciate if I filled up your house with cruel and dangerous strangers, Orange? If I funneled away money that was rightfully yours and used it on myself instead? Build a pool for myself, maybe? Instead of hiring some actual experienced competent staff or developing living space? She glowers at the woman. Maybe you should practice what you preach. 
Violet, Orin says, turning to her. She speaks calmly, though her voice is rich with emotion. Please, know this. I am truly, unendingly sorry. About everything. If I ever get out of here, I'll fix the orphanage up. I swear it. And I'll even help you find your parents. Violet opens her mouth, then hesitates. I could really help you, you know? Orange continues. Or give you a head start at least. There are a great many people I know who might be able to set you in the right direction. You know I don't want to make friends with them, right? Violet replies, cautiously. I don't want a happily ever after as a big family. I want them to suffer the way I have suffered. That's it. That's all. Then so be it. Orange says back, firmly. If that's what you want, then I'll help you do it. Violet chews her tongue, regarding the woman. I'm not accepting your apology. She says, but she says it quietly. I don't want to forgive you. You don't deserve it. But I'll take your help when we get out of here. If you're being truthful. I am. Orin says, and I think she means it. I am. Violet nods, and she says nothing further. Just up ahead, there are two pathways for us to follow. One leads around the statue to the left, the other leads around the statue to the right. Across the wall on the passage on the left are marked three colors, red, orange, and yellow. To the right, the wall is marked with four, green, blue, indigo, and violet, and the phrase, the white player is permitted to choose their path. Interesting. So which way am I going to go? To the left or the right? I guess this is goodbye for now. Red says to the others. I don't know what we're about to face here, but... Well... I'll do my best. He clears his throat, straightens his back. <clears throat> I expect all of you to do likewise, naturally. Lou looks at me. Which path are you going to choose then, Gray? She asks. The others quieten and await my response. I consider going with her, with green and with indigo and violet, to be a part of the larger group with the people I'm closer to on the whole. Blue and I are bound by secrets. We are connected, in a way. But, but I don't think that's what the group requires. I'll go with red and orange, I tell her, and to the others. You know, to even up the numbers a little, it's only fair, they might need me after all. Would I still have gone with them if yellow was alive? That would have made the teams perfectly equal, four and four. And yet, I'm not so sure if I would have done so. Maybe I would have gone with blue. I guess it's irrelevant, really. My decision is made. She nods. Alright. She reaches out as if to touch me, to squeeze my arm. She hesitates and then she sees it through, squeezing me gently just below the shoulder. It's nice, the human touch. And with that, we prepare to part ways. It feels different this time. Green gives me an uneasy grin and sends me off with a little salute. Judgment day. He murmurs. Indigo glances round and gives me a nod. He wipes some sweat from his face. You're a good person, Ray. I mean it. Violet regards us all in silence. She considers each and every one of us, and then turns away. She is the first to break from the group, and the others follow on behind. We watch as they leave us, as they follow the corridor away to the right. I look to my team, to the players remaining, to red, orange, and to the corpse of yellow. I really do hate how we've been carrying her around like this, but hell, what other choice did we have? Everyone ready? Orange asks. Red nods. Absolutely. We've made it this far, haven't we? How hard can it be? 
fuck. <sighs> Don't say that. I mutter, and we make our way around to the left. I shoot one last glance up to the Asura, his sinister, sunken purple eyes vanishing from sight as we round the corner. We pass between the black walls and follow the corridor through a doorway and into a little room. The room is wet and dark and cold. There's another door opposite, sealed tight. There is a single light source overhead, a dull violet light bulb, and there's a screen attached to the wall. The screen is affixed just above a desk-like metal panel, and upon this panel are two buttons. One says, safe, and the other says secure. That's it. That's all there is in the room. As we realize this fact, the door behind us grinds quickly out from the wall and seals us in, locked up tight, and the screen sparks and flickers into life. Upon it is our host, the Game Master, Twisted One. The 3D graphic of the Asura and all his mystery, I can feel my heart rate increase, the pinpricks of fear, and I wonder how many years of my life have been lost to stress in these past long hours. Welcome, says the Asura, to the Violet Room. There will be no cards to collect in this room. Your successes or failures will be decided instantly. I exchange worried looks with the others, a change of pace. This is unlikely to be good news. You find yourselves in two teams, in two identical locations. Before you all are two buttons, safe and secure. You must each press one button in order to complete the room. You will have 15 minutes in which to press either button. However, in your teams, you must all press the same button. Is that it? I wonder, throat dry, fingers tapping my leg. We just have to press a button and we pass the room? It's too easy. What's the catch? If the 15 minutes pass and you... As an individual have not pressed the button, then your caller will be activated, and your game will be over. Orange brings her hands up to her mouth. No cards? Red murmurs. He's threatening to activate her callers directly. If the 15 minutes pass, and you have not all pressed the same button, then you will be given a further 15 minutes in which to achieve unanimity in your decision. If these final 15 minutes pass and unanimity has not been achieved, or you, as an individual, have failed to press any button, then as a team your callers will be activated and your games will be over. If both teams have unanimously pressed the safe button before the time is up, then your callers will be deactivated and you may pass through to the next room. Huh. Red laughs. It's a no-brainer. What's the trick here, you bastard? The Asura continues. If both teams choose secure, and your callers will be deactivated. However, you may not pass through to the next room. You must begin the games again from the Red Room. A cold shiver runs through me. I see the dark waters of the Red Room in my mind. The submerged statue and waterlogged corpses. Though all the corpses look like yellow to me now. I picture the orange room. The yellow, the green, and all the rest. I try to imagine doing them all. Again. Then what? Just to end up right back here? Why would we do that? Why would we press secure? If one team chooses secure, and the other team safe, then the secure team will have their callers deactivated, and they may pass through to the next room. The safe team 
will have their colors activated, and their games will be over. And there it is. There's the catch. The horror of this implication hangs heavy and cold in the room. With 15 minutes begin now, every player must press a button. The team's decision must be unanimous. And with that, the screen shuts off, leaving us with the dim, violet glow and the two buttons. Safe and secure. We stand there as a trio, contemplating this horror in the gloom. Yellow is propped against the wall nearby, her head lolled to one side. Well, Red, I think you're right, Oren says at last, breaking the silence. It's a no-brainer. We go for safe, obviously. It's an easy choice. Red stays perfectly still, but his eyes flicker over. No. He says, his voice low, as if he doesn't want the others to hear, despite their being in a separate room. No, we can't. I was wrong. I was too hasty. Red, what are you talking about? I ask him. We go for safe. I mean, we have to. But in truth, I already know what he's about to say. Great. We can't. We can't pick safe. It's too risky. He hesitates, then speaks on. Secure is the only option we can press. It's the only one that guarantees our continued survival. The stress rises. I was hoping we'd go for a quick agreement on this. Red, look. But he goes on interrupting me. No, great. We can't pick safe. We can't. If we pick safe and they pick secure, then we're fucked. Game over. No second chances. Our callers will activate and we'll die. And we'll die just like Yellow did. He begins to pace. If we pick secure, then the worst that'll happen is we just have to go through the games again, right? And you want that? Do you? I ask him, as Orange looks fretfully between us. You want to play the games all over again? Of course I don't. He says, his voice rising. But it's better than death. I, I don't understand. Says Orange, her voice high. Wait, why would the other team pick secure? Because it guarantees them survival, Orange, for God's sake. Red barks. Why would they pick safe when it puts them at risk of instant death? Red! I say, loudly, if we pick secure and they pick safe, then they'll be the ones to die. You want that, do you? Blue and green? Indigo, violet, all dead? Killed because of us? Of course I damn well don't. He shouts back, rubbing his hands against his temples. But they're going to pick secure, aren't they? Think about it. Really, really think about it. He stops pacing and looks from orange to eye and back. This is a team with violet, with blue. You, you really think they're going to pick safe? She would. I'm sure she would. They have indigo as well, don't forget. I tell him. Indigo gave me a card in one of the earlier rooms when he didn't have to. He did, says Red, resuming his pacing. In the yellow room, I remember, he gave you a card, but not, crucially, over himself. He made sure his own collar was deactivated with a card before giving one to you. And, and Green? You didn't hear Green in the other room, Gray. Red grimaces sucking some air in through his teeth. He's losing the plot. That phone call really screwed him up, you know? He was waffling about drowning people, and how drowning people grab onto others or some such nonsense. He's going to go for secure, I'm sure of it. I rub a hand across my forehead and feel a sheen of sweat. The room isn't cold anymore. But just now, I tell him, just now I gave everyone else their cards. In the indigo room, on the rapids, I gave everyone else their cards before my own even though I would have been well within my rights to take the very first one. They'll know I'm going to hit save. Of course I would, it's everything I preached, like a madman. Do they, though? Orange asks quietly, and we turn to her, her face illuminated in the faint purple. 
knew they? Definitely? We can't know for certain. We have no idea what they're discussing right now. We pause for a moment and try to imagine it. The commotion in our parallel room. Blue and green and violet and indigo, all arguing amongst themselves about the exact same thing, just mirrored. This is fucked. I murmur. This is so, so cruel. So it's decided, says Red. I don't like it, but we have to go for secure. No, I retort. Nothing's decided, just, just hold on. What is there to discuss? We go for secure to keep on living, it's the only sane choice. He shouts, throwing out his arms. I don't like it any more than you, but we have no choice. Best case scenario, they pick secure as well and we restart from the red room. We've done it before and we can do it again and we'll discuss. We'll come up with a proper strategy. We'll think of something we missed. Come up with some surefire guarantees that the other team will definitely pick safe. So what, we'll go round again, hoping that nobody dies? Again? I say, pointing a quick finger to Yellow. Only to end up right back here with the intent to choose safe? Why would we do that? Go through all that? Why don't we just pick safe now? <sighs> I make a noise of frustration and point to the wall, somewhere beyond which I'm presuming the other team to be. They're rational people, Red. They'll work this out. They're probably at the exact same stage of the discussion as we are right now. Yes. Yes, Gray. Red says, but he says it slowly. They're rational people. Very damn rational people indeed. And the rational choice is secure. He pauses. They're self-interested and individualistic. Not necessarily bad qualities to have. Don't get me wrong. He puts out his hands. But in this specific situation, in this damn game, it is going to get us killed. Unless we try to think like them. <sighs> but, but don't you get it? I say to him, desperately trying to win over the room. They'll be having the exact same conversation right now. And if they're trying to think like us too, then what would they pick? They pick safe. Red shakes his head. I don't know, Gray. Just don't know. And the uncertainty is enough. Secure guarantees we stay alive. It's that simple. We have to go for secure. He sighs. <sighs> we have to. Wait, wait, just wait. Says Orange. We turn to her, Red with his arms folded. There has to be more to it than this. It's a test. The words on the pedestal, they're crucial. Deliver to others what you wish to be delivered unto yourself. The words tell us what to pick. The other team will have realized this. The correct choice has to be safe. <sighs> Orange. Red sighs, exasperated. It isn't logical. It would be nice, sure, if we both pick safe. But we can't guarantee that they will. What part of this don't you guys understand? Orange hesitates and I make a decision. I decide to reveal some of my secret, and I just come straight out with it. Hell, I've already spoken it out loud to Blue anyway. There's a kid in here. I say to the room, and this gives them pause. A, a, a what? Red blusters. Where? What do you mean? I saw them in the vent in the green room. They told me to stay quiet, and, and, fuck it. I'm pretty sure I was speaking to them on the phone in the blue room too. Why didn't you tell us? Red shouts, throwing up his arms. Was it a boy, Gray? Orange asks me, intently. Or a girl? And how old? About ten or eleven, I'd say. I tell her, and her jaw clenches. Boy or girl? I lie, and some of the tension eases from her face. Red, however. A boy? He shrieks, grabbing me by the shoulders. Was he freckled? Tell me, Gray, did the boy have freckles? I... N no, he didn't. 
Are you certain? Yes. Right. Okay. Oh, all right then. Red releases me and staggers back against the wall, breathing deeply. I can only presume that freckles are a feature his nephew possesses. So who was he then? Red asks eventually. Where did he come from? Is he trapped down here with us? I don't know. I don't know anything about him really. But I thought I'd mention it since, since he seemed to know what was coming up in the next rooms. He hinted that I'd have to act to really work to keep everyone together and to get us through the games. To get us all through the games. Is, is that the reason? Is that the reason why you did it? Orange asks me. Why you did what you did in the rapids? I shrug. Partly, it's what inspired me, at least, and I stand by it. It was the right thing to do. Blue was correct. Red mutters. It was an irrational thing to do. As I said, I say levelly. I stand by it, and we have to do the same now. We have to act irrationally right now, and so do they. I was right. The only way we all win is if we all act irrationally. Red resumes his pacing. Timer ticks down. Orange turns to regard yellow for a little while, and we contemplate in the tense silence. What if they pick secure, Gray? Orange asks me. What if they pick the option most likely to protect themselves? Then we die. I tell them. We'll die down here in the dark, but I'm confident they won't. They know that we won't, and they'll have come to the same conclusion as me about the games. About the theme. I'm sure of it. We pick safe, because they're also going to pick safe. Red looks at me. I can see the gears turning and steaming in his mind. He wants to pick safe. I can see it. He just can't bring himself to do it. <sighs> Red. I say to him, Please, do this. Go for safe. We all go for safe, and we'll all walk out of here. We'll all laugh with desperate relief, and we'll all walk out of here. Us seven. We'll open the rainbow door and we can escape, return to our lives. Green can complete his journey and learn how to forgive himself. Blue can go back to work at IIT. Indigo can seek penance for whatever the hell horrible thing it is that he thinks he's done. And Violet can finally track down her parents and move on with her life. We make amends, and we lay yellow to rest. Together. But wonder what we ever worried about. Of course, the other team picks safe, we'll think. Why wouldn't they? After everything we've been through. If we don't trust each other now, guys, then when will we? How many times do we have to play these games over and over and over until we pick safe? How much more can we take? Cause I'm exhausted. And it's true. I've been drinking the water from the waterfalls and getting some sit down respite at the computers typing up my reports. But we've had no food, no sleep, no proper rest. My muscles ache, my joints crack, shadows swim in the corners of my eyes. My hands are wrinkled and paled from the moisture. My wet clothes are heavy against my skin. This infernal collar chafes and stings against my neck. I just want to go home. I just want to be done with this, with all of this. And we're close now. We're so, so close. We just have to make the right choice. I murmur, finally. We just have to pick safe. It's irrational, I know. I don't disagree. But it's also right. The timer ticks down. Well, then? Red says at last. He takes a deep, slow breath. God help me, Gray. God help all of us. Can't believe I've been taken in by your... Your madness. Your fucking lunacy. But fine. So be it. So be it, you mad bastard. He exchanges a quick look with Orange, and she nods with an anxious smile. Red crosses the room, and he brings his hand down onto a button. Safe, he presses, and the button chimes. My adrenaline surges. Orange walks between us, and she does the same. Red steps back to give her some space, and down comes her hand onto Safe. Just you then, buddy. Red mutters, and I walk over. Here we go then. No turning back now. And I bring my hand down, pressing safe. The button chimes. 
There is a collective intake of breath, but nothing happens. We stand there in silence, in the gloom. I guess we have to wait until the 15 minutes are up. Red mutters. I glance at the timer. Two minutes to go. Not long. So we just wait. Waiting for this hell to finally come to an end. We jump as the screen flickers back to life, and the Asura appears upon it. Is this it? I think, pulse racing. Are we about to find out what the other team picked? It was safe, surely. It, it must have been safe. It must have been. The fifteen minutes have passed, says the Asura. One team successfully achieved an unanimous vote. However, one team did not. Shit. Oh shit, shit, shit. The team that successfully cast an unanimous vote may not vote again. Their decision has been recorded. The team that failed to cast an unanimous vote now has a further 15 minutes in which to vote again. Every player on this team must vote again, and the vote must be unanimous. The game will end once every player has pressed the button. Thank you. And that's it. The screen cuts off and the timer restarts. I look between the others, horror writ across their faces. Oh my god. Red whispers, then louder, screaming. Oh god. Oh god. What have, what have we done? We're dead. Fucking dead. And it's all thanks to you. He shoves me up against the wall and I shove him back. Hey, hey, just wait. I stumble over my words, trying to calm myself down. What does this mean? What does it mean? Let's just think about this. Someone, someone on the other team voted for secure. Or someone voted for safe. Orange mutters in a daze. Could have been an even split, also. We consider this. Okay, okay. Here's what happened. I say, my stomach churning with sickening anxiety, trying to come up with a theory. Someone pressed secure right away. Violet probably, to make a point. Everyone else refused and pressed safe. And they're talking around at this very moment. What if... She's done the exact same. Orange asks, her voice full of fear. What if she's already pressed secure for a second time? She doesn't get a chance to redo it, right? Or does she? If she's pressed secure again, then she's basically forced all the others to press it too. Or else their callers will go off for failing to achieve an unanimous vote. No, I reply, shaking my head. That hasn't happened, I'm certain of it. How can you be so certain? Red asked. Because if that was the case and Violet had immediately pressed secure, and if she's unable to change her mind, then there's really no use dragging it out. The others would have pressed the same button right away. The Asura said the game would end when everyone had pressed a button, and since we're all still here, since the game's still going on and we're all still breathing, I open my hands. We can only assume that they are still deliberating. Fuck. Red grunts, running his hands through his hair. We should have picked secure. We should have picked secure. No, no, it, it's okay. I tell him, trying to reassure myself as much as the others. We came to an unanimous decision. The other team now knows this. Are they really going to assume we'd be more callous? And we'd be cruel enough to vote for secure? But it isn't cruel. Red sighs. <sighs> Great. It's not about being cruel or callous. It's rational. It's all. Well, there's no way of knowing. There's no way of knowing for sure what's going on, so we just have to wait. I say, we just have to wait. And so we do. What follows are the longest, most excruciating 15 minutes of my life. Torturously they drag on and on and on. I never thought I would find myself willing a room's timer to actually go faster, but here we are. 
we are not granted the mercy of the game's end until the timer reaches its final five seconds. It abruptly, suddenly stops, and the screen flickers back to brightness. My stomach lurches. There we go. Congratulations, says the Asura. Both teams have reached an unanimous vote. You may now step out from your rooms, and the results will be displayed upon the screen. The picture cuts out, and with a creak, the door grinds open. Red marches through it at once, orange hurries after. I pause to collect yellow, my heart fit to burst out of my chest with anticipatory terror as I hoist her up. Please. It's all I can think. Please, please tell me that you pick safe. Please, you have to, you have to have picked safe. Please, 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 please. I carry yellow through the door. Beyond is an open space, a door, and above it a screen. The door is not marked with the colors of the rainbow. It is marked with white. Everyone is here. They are arguing. They are looking urgently into each other's faces. Their voices are muffled to me. It's the same sensation I experienced when Yellow died. It's like I'm underwater. I carefully set Yellow down against the wall and go to join them, hearing little more than my own heartbeats. The rushing of blood flowing past my eardrums. Blue runs at me and grabs me by the shoulders. She is screaming into my face. What did you pick? I think she says. Gray, what did he choose? My eyes flicker over to the left. I catch sight of the color draining from Orange's face. She clutches her stomach and vomits across the floor. Red has just thrown a punch, I think, that strikes Green in the side of the face and Green shoves him back, his eyes wide. What is happening? I don't understand. What is happening? We pick safe, of course, I murmur. We made the right choice. You guys did too, right? You guys pick safe. Blue has begun to cry. She releases me and clutches the sides of her head. I don't understand. I don't understand what's going on. The screen crackles and flickers into life, and it displays our choices. It's split into two halves. The left half is marked with the pixelated streaks of red, orange, yellow, and white, and it reads, Safe. The other half is marked with pixelated streaks of green, blue, indigo, and violet and it reads, Secure. I, I struggle to process. I, I, I don't understand. I whisper, staring at the results. Well, why would you do that? How could you do this to us? We didn't know what you were going to pick, screams Green, though he isn't even talking to me. He's responding to the same question as asked by Red. Blue. Fucking blue. Blue, she said. Blue hyperventilates. Her cool, calm composure is completely lost. It has vanished. It was rational. She repeats, over and over. It was the rational choice. I thought, with Red. Cray, you understand me. You understood me. Why wouldn't you pick secure? We would go through this again. We'd work out a different pattern. We'd think of a way out. The child and the vent. They were going to help us out. The answer lies with the kid, right? She is babbling. Violet has pressed herself against the wall. You're getting what you deserve. She mumbles, but her face shows only horror. You deserve this. How could you be so stupid? Making yourselves so vulnerable. Idiots. Idiots. Indigo only stares at us, shaking violently. Words appear across the screen. They are the same words that we read at the room's beginning. The ones that appeared on the statue's pedestal. And they read, This is the sum of duty. Do not unto others what you would not have them do unto you. Deliver to others what you wish to be delivered unto yourself. This will become truth. The voice of the Asura booms out from an unseen speaker. He reads these words aloud. This is the sum of duty. Do not unto others, but you will not have them do unto you. 
Deliver to others what you wish to be delivered unto yourself. This will become truth. The results will now be done unto you, as you choose to do unto others. We watch as final surviving seven in shock and terror as the results of the game are promptly switched. Our choice now reads, secure, and the other team's reads, safe. Green player, blue player, indigo player, violet player. Your games have now come to an end, says the Asura. Thank you for playing. There is no time to think, no time to process. Four of the callers in the room begin to whir and grind. Red and orange step back in alarm, eyes wide, watching in petrified disbelief. Blue is the closest to me. Her hands spring up to her collar at once in panic, and her mechanisms begin to rotate and buzz. Her screams are terrible and they pierce right through to my skull. Gray! She cries out, grabbing onto me, her eyelids flying open as blood begins to erupt in thick scarlet from around her neck. The green releases a sickening noise of distress. He goes down, his glasses flying from his face as his head smacks the tile, vomiting blood as he scratches at his throat, writhing. Endigo claws at the metal, tears at it, losing the bulk of a fingernail in the process. Streams of scarlet pour down across his chest as he staggers into the wall and crashes down to the floor, and Violet, Violet screams the longest out of any of them, he goes from a shrill, sharp wail to a gradual gurgle of blood and bile. This can't be happening, this, this can't be happening, no, no we made it so far, they were supposed, they were supposed to pick safe, they were supposed to pick safe, we're going to escape, that's the plan, we'll escape together because they'll pick safe. But they didn't. They didn't. Blue tries to speak. Her bloodshot eyes roll back up into her head as she collapses down to the tile at my feet. Her head twitching, body shaking as the collar bores its way into her throat. And one by one, they drown. My fellow players drowned right here before me. The mechanisms in the collars fall silent, but for a little while longer, the people around me continue to rise to stare out with lifeless eyes, bright thick blood pulsing and pouring out across their clothes, their skin and pooling over the floor. Then at last they too fall still and silent. The next door grinds and creaks as it slides open, as I stand there quiet amongst the corpses. <laughs>